Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about tomorrow's DFS League of Legends slate for July 20th. Um, here, um, I have retreat tweeted um, uh, one of the, the Twitter accounts that I follow um, that has posted the starters um, for two games in LCK and two games in the LPL. Another four game slate. Um, I am traveling for my other job um, this week. So I'm <laughs> doing this in a hotel room. Um, but nonetheless, I will go into the predictions and the kill upside uh, for each of the matchups that I believe will occur. Um, otherwise, um, as mentioned before, I do also pr uh, provide. Um, prop bets on over under kills for each of the players and match predictions um, and favorite plays on um, my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash DFS underscore Chan. So if you want to be a subscriber or patron, um, please feel free to join. Um, so far it's been, you know, going pretty well. Um, so otherwise, um, yeah, without any further ado, let's dive in. Uh, again, it's uh, two games in Korea, so let's dive into that first. It's Fred and Breon versus DRX and Nongshim versus Damwon Kia. Um, just before I go into any, any of these further, it's going to be a chalky night, I think. Pretty chalky. We have four sizable favorites, not, you know, not a single close game based on the Vegas odds. So I think it's going to be a pretty chalky favorite-based uh, slate. Uh, so I think, you know, more than anything, that's probably why the kill upside um, prediction is probably the most, more important than ever today on this slate. So I'll, I'll go into a little more details on that. So DRX my, at minus 600 should be should should really hand, handedly beat Fred Brian. I mean, DRX is a sizable favorite at minus 600 and they've been playing decent. I know they've been up and down here and there. Uh, but against elite teams, they've had their struggles. But against bad teams like Fred Brion and HLE, I think DRX has been taking care of business um, pretty handedly. I think DRX should win here as well. I know Fred Brion has also been experimenting with the new bottom lane, new AD carry, and new jungler, and uh, new top, and new mid, not new mid, but new, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, but still, I mean, that has been kind of messing with their, you know, team chemistry. And I just feel like DRX is, this is a perfect place for them to bounce back and kind of get their stuff together. Um, and I really love DRX's uh, mid lane and the bottom lane. I know DRX has actually started, I think, a new jungler, I, be, I believe, Juhan, and in the jungle position over Piosik. And we don't know who's going to start. Um, and that's going to be confirmed one hour before the uh, the game time. So it's going to be around 2 a.m., three a I think 2 a.m. Eastern time. So look out for that. Um, if I'm still awake by then, I'll post it. But otherwise, just know that there is a risk um, in that jungle position for DRX. Um, but otherwise, Zika in the mid lane and uh, Deft and uh, Barrel in the bottom lane are probably the reason why I think they will win um, pretty easily. So I'm predicting DRX uh, win two to win uh, two to zero. The next matchup in Korea is Damwon Kia versus Nongshim Red Force. Um, I don't think this is going to be close. I think, I think the odds are kind of, I mean, right. And some people are saying that the odds are ridiculous because I think Nongshim, they think Nongshim has a pretty good shot. I think Nongshim has a good roster on its on the paper, but they've just not been playing well. I mean, I think Ghost is still a big liability in the bottom lane, and I feel like Duck Dom and Kellen for Damwon Kia in the bottom lane are Damwon Kia's weakness, and I just don't think Ghost um, and Effort um, are going to be able to exploit that bottom lane for Damwon Kia. So I think Damwon Kia, led by Canyon and Showmaker and Nuguri in the top lane, I think they're going to dominate against Nongshim. I'm a little worried about Kana going up against Nuguri, but I think Nuguri is more than capable of handling Kana. And I think in every single other lane, like I said, jungle, mid, 
in the bottom lane. I think those are the probably uh, the, the edge goes to Damon Kia's players in those respective lanes. So I think Damon Kia is probably going to win two to zero as well. As mentioned, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a chalky slate. Um, I just don't see many paths for Breon and Nongshim to beat these uh, elite teams or top four teams, in my opinion, for uh, in the LCK. So I just think the favorites in the LCK should win, and I think it's going to be a boring two-gamer in Korea. But in the LPL, I think things get a little bit more exciting um, in one of the matches, I think. Uh, top esports versus where Adam is not the match that I think that could that will help happen. I think top esports is miles and miles ahead of rare Adam in terms of individual laning phase, team fights, objectives, uh, macro game, micro game, you name it. I think top esports has it all compared to uh, rare Adam in terms of what you know what kind of advantage the top esports has. I think top esports is superior in every single one of those. Um, especially in the bottom lane, iBoy and Yuyanja have been a very big liability for Rare Adam. And I feel like that's probably where top esports will shine. So I do think Jackie Love, Mark, and Knight will probably be the focus um, of the slate. Um, I think this matchup is actually going to be... Um, pretty high in kills um i didn't mention i i'll, I'll go back to the kill upside because i haven't i didn't really touch on that for the korean games so i'll just do the match predictions here and then i'll go back and do the the kill upside predictions for all four matchups so yeah i, I think top esports should win here two to zero um like i said i think jackie love mark versus iboy and yuyanja is a huge huge um mismatch um, that will go be go in favor of top esports. So I just feel like Rare Adam hasn't shown me anything this this split. Um, I think they have been playing like frankly one of the bottom tier teams in the LPL. Um, I know their roster is looks pretty good on paper, but I just feel like they're not good. They're just not good. The last matchup is where I think things could happen. Just because RNG has been in really bad form, um, I know RNG has been very up and down. I know they have the roster and they've had the experience they have shown before in the last split <laughs> or in the MSI that they can do this, except after Ben has left and Breathe came in for the top lane and I just feel like after the MSI hangover, RNG has not been the same team, same elite team that they were before. Um, I just feel like this summer split, they haven't really shown me that consistency that I would like out of all the elite teams that I basically consider them elite. Um, but here, I think going up, up against BLG, that has kind of found a combination of players that works. Um, I think RNG could potentially struggle here and it can be made drop a game. I do think RNG should still win the series two to one. Um, but I do think that he, they will drop a, they drop a game in the series and BLG is more than capable of um, winning a game here. I do think, I think I, I really like rise. Um, they, he has been playing much better um, since he got the starting nod over doggo and then Fofo. Like I said, I love Fofo much more than icon. And who knows what they're going to do with the substitution. And they've been just playing toying with it. So I just want you to let, I, I want to let you guys know that there is a substitution risk in the jungle position, mid position and 80 carry position. So Khan, I believe has been playing pretty well, um, but they obviously Weiwei is still there. I don't really know the, the exact status of Weiwei, whether he's demoted to the academy level uh, affiliate in the LDL. Um, so maybe he's not even eligible to play, but I'm just letting you guys know from the past, like way, way got replaced by Khan icon sometimes subs in for Fofo and doggo, you know, obviously got replaced by rise. So really there are some substitution risks there. Um, maybe there's not because of the ineligibility of some of those players, previous players, but I'm just letting you guys know there is. 
Um, and also RNG, like I said, Xiaohu has not been in good form. And I just feel like that mid lane is probably the lane to target um, in terms of the matchup. I like Fofo to go up against Xiaohu. And then in the bottom lane is a little bit, that's what I'm worried about. I think Gala and Ming have been pretty good, solid. Um, probably been their best um, lane for RNG. And BLG with Rise and Crisp, even though they had been playing together for a while now, for about for about a week, or a week and a half, I guess. Um, even though that has happened, I think Rise and Crisp is still inferior to Gala and Ming's level. And then in the jungle position is where I kind of, you know, struggle with Khan versus Wei. Wei has obviously shown me that they he, he is one of the elite junglers in the LPL. And Khan is like an up-and-coming jungler, but yeah, who knows? But this is a, the last thing I'll say about this matchup is um, the fascinating matchup in the top lane, right? Ben, who used to play for RNG, Breathe, who used to play for, play for BLG, is now swapping, has now swapped the teams, and this is the first match uh, between those two top laners after they switch teams uh, with each other. So Ben against for his former team, Breathe against his former team in BLG, um, going up against each other. So they're going to have, to, they're going to try real hard each <laughs> respectively to prove that, you know, that each, you know, breathe and be, breathe or bend. I mean, each, each of them, they're going to just battle. I think they're going to try to prove that they are, you know, a superior top laner, whoever it is. Um, so I think that's, that's where it's at. In terms of the kill upside, um, like I said, I think the kill upside wise, I think it's interesting because, Historically, Rare Adam and BLG tend to play a bit slower. But I do think BLG, RNG, um, RNG tends to play a little bit slow too. And BLG, but even though BLG um, has historically played slow, after they have, you know, subbed in Khan, Fofo, well, Khan and Rise, I guess, and then Fofo starting back up again, I do think they play a little bit faster. So I do think the kill upside is decent here. Um, I'm going to have to say that the top esports is probably the highest kill upside matchup here. So I would say top esports are a one, BLG, RNG, two, and then, uh, and then, um, Daman Kia, Nongshim, three, and then DRX, Fred Brian, four, in terms of kill upside from most to least. Um, again, I think TESRA, one, BLG, RNG, two. Um, Daman Kia Nongshim three and then DRX Freddy Brian four. That's kind of how I see it. Um, I haven't checked the combined kills per minute metrics yet, but I will and I'll post them in Patreon, uh, Patreon uh, webpage and the post they're in. Otherwise, um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, like I said, I think it's going to be a pretty chalky night, even though it's a four game slate because of we, you know, the fact that we have four sizable favorites. Um, but if you like the video, please hit the like button, you know, those, you know, the fact, you know, those likes that I see and those likes that I, um, can point to is the, one of the reasons why I keep doing these videos. And if you want to watch videos about other sports for true DFS that has sponsored this video, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to their channel. Otherwise, yeah, I hope you guys, um, win some money today and good luck out there. And hopefully we see each other at the top. Have a good one. Bye-bye.